Colleagues from the media, thank you very much for joining us today. Before I start, I just received sad news from Tokyo on the untimely demise of former Prime Minister of Japan, His Excellency Shinzo Abe. I wish to extend our deepest sympathy and condolences from the government and the people of the Republic of Indonesia to the government and the people of Japan at this time of sorrow. His dedication to serving his country and people will always be remembered as a prime example for all. Colleagues, we have just concluded the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting or FMM under Indonesia presidency, which was convened here in Bali, Indonesia. All the G20 foreign ministers were present in Bali and participated in the meeting. Secretary Truss of UK have to leave Bali earlier. Eight from nine foreign ministers of invited countries are also participated in person. Fiji as chair of Pacific Island Forum, Senegal as chair of the African Union, Rwanda as chair of NEPAD, Cambodia as chair of ASEAN, Spain, UAA, Singapore, and the Netherlands, while Suriname as chair of Caribbean community and Ukraine participated virtually. The meeting was also attended by nine leaders and representatives of international organization. The United Nations, Food, World Food Program, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, IMF, WHO, ILO, OECD, and FSB. Colleagues, this is for the first time the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting, sorry, the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting sit together in one room to discuss important issues confronting all of us. The decision of members and the invitees to attend the meeting in person are not to be taken lightly. They choose to make an extra effort to be here. Therefore, once again, I would like to convey my high appreciation for their strong support to Indonesia presidency in the G20 and their friendship to the people of Indonesia. Their presence in person also reflect their commitment to G20 and to make G20 matters and relevant. Colleagues, before the FMM, I conducted intensive communication and consultation with all G20 members. Since the very beginning, we have exerted maximum efforts to create a comfortable atmosphere for every participant. With this comfortable atmosphere, I hope participants could use the meeting to build bridges, not walls, strengthen trust rather than distrust, and commit to collaborate and be part of solution. Colleagues, the G20 FMM discussed two very important issues, namely strengthening multilateralism as well as addressing food and energy security. For the first session, foreign ministers were briefed by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Professor Jeffrey Sach of Columbia University to gain insight on how to revive the spirit of multilateralism in addressing pressing global challenges. For the second session, members were briefed by Executive Director of World Food Program, David, David Beasley, Special Representative of the UN Secretary General for Sustainable Energy for All and Co-Chair of UN Energy, Demilola Ogunbiyi, and Managing Director of Development Policy and Partnership, World Bank, Dr. Mari Elka Pangestu. Colleagues, my recollection as chair of what transpired in the meeting as follows. The G20 foreign minister was held at a time of great challenges. 
while recognizing that pandemic recovery remains a global priority, the world must now also address the impact of the war in Ukraine. Participants express deep concern about humanitarian consequences of the war, as well as its global impact on food, energy, and finance. Participants call for full and consistent adherence to the UN Charter as well as applicable international law. Some members express condemnation on the act of invasion. The war has caused tremendous suffering to the civilian population and there is a need to ensure safe and unhindered access for timely delivery of humanitarian assistance for those in need. Participants share the same views that trust among nations is important to create a conducive environment for peace and stability. There is a strong push from many participants for an immediate end to the war and peaceful resolution of conflict through diplomacy and negotiations. Concerns were raised that multilateralism is under threat and increasingly challenged to respond effectively global challenges. Participants agreed that there is an urgent need to strengthen multilateralism. Multilateralism remains the best way to resolve global challenges. Cooperation in pandemic response, including in ensuring equitable access to vaccine, is one of multilateralism success story. Political will and global collaboration are critical to ensure multilateralism delivers and benefit all countries. All participants were concerned about soaring prices of food and energy and reiterated that current crisis, including issues related to their accessibility, affordability, and sustainability, will continue to hinder global recovery. Developing countries will be the most affected, particularly low-income countries and small island developing countries. There is an urgent need to address global food supply chain disruption. Reintegrating food and fertilizer from Ukraine and Russia into global market is critical. Many participants expressed their support to the UN Secretary General's effort to providing safe passages, including through seaport. Some participants underline that food and fertilizer are not in the sanction and express readiness to address practical difficulties in doing trade in food and fertilizer, including on payment, insurances, logistics, and others. Some participants also call for a stronger partnership and collaboration in achieving energy security and accelerating transition to clean and renewable energy through research cooperation, investment, and affordable transfer of technology. Energy transition are critical to address explore further G20 collaboration to strengthen global food, energy security, resilience, and sustainability, including with the UN system, other international organizations, and relevant stakeholders. So colleagues, this is my recollection of what transpired at the meeting. Colleagues from the media, on the bilateral note, I have conducted 23 bilateral meetings with fellow foreign ministers and leaders of international organization. We discuss both bilateral and a number of pressing international issues. The war in Ukraine was discussed in almost all bilateral meetings. And I'm pleased to inform that we have signed during the bilateral meetings three agreements. MOU on bilateral consultation with Argentina and Senegal 
and MOU to strengthen political dialogue and cooperation with Spain. I'm very delighted that the FMM has a lot for frank and constructive discussion. The G20 FMM is part of the pathway leading toward the G20 summit, which Indonesia will be hosting this November. So once again, I would like to express my highest appreciation to all G20 foreign ministers as well as the invitees. I also wish to thank friends from the media. I thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak teman-teman dan saya harus kembali ke ruangan untuk melakukan sejumlah pertemuan bilateral. Sehat selalu teman-teman. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.